Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Mikey, and this is my new channel, and we're going to be kicking it off with a beginner's guide to RimWorld Beta 18. So, I really like this game. I've started playing in Alpha 17, and I noticed that there's only a couple guides on YouTube for the uh, Beta 18. Uh, a lot of people make beginner's guides, but they're three or four or five alphas old, or updates old, and uh, they, they're not always as valid as uh, they can be with the new information. So I wanted to give a little bit of insight into this game. Rimworld is a colony simulator and management sim uh, with the sole purpose of you building a ship and trying to get off the Rimworld you are on. So we are going to start off, this is the main menu, we're going to start off by clicking new colony. And you're going to be given the main scenario uh, that a lot of people start on. I encourage you to try the tutorial. This will also teach you some uh, smaller game mechanics and allow you to bind keys how you see fit. But for now, uh, this can kind of be your tutorial before the tutorial. So generally your first uh, playthrough will be crash landed. Uh, you get three people and you start with a bunch of different things and you start off with some research. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's just a great way to start. This is just a custom one I made down here. Ignore that. Um, but yeah, these are the three you start out with. You can see, you can choose from them. If you wish to start with something else, go ahead. Why not? It's your game. You can do what you want. So, but we are going to do the crash landed. So now you're going to choose a storyteller. Now the storyteller, like up here, creates events like pirate raids, resource drops, or animal attacks. Their choices will affect the story of your colony. You can change these settings at any time. So Cassandra Classic is like the uh, vanilla, you could call it. Uh, Phoebe Chillax is a little easier, which I recommend for your first time. And Randy Random, he kind of sporadically throws things at you. It can be good, it can be bad. So I would, I would recommend uh, doing Phoebe Chillax. She gives you a long time between uh, raids and uh, things that can be difficult, and uh, it, she's not too bad on the earlier difficulties. So if you really uh, don't feel like you're going to be able to do a good job your first time around, you might want to try Base Builder, but I would, I would recommend starting on some challenge uh, for you guys that play games. Uh, you, you'll, you'll grab the game pretty quick. I'd say give it a good 10, 15 hours, and you'll have the basic mechanics down, and then from then on, you, you know, you'll be learning more advanced things. Now, permadeath mode is something you can do. Um, for this tutorial, we won't be doing it. This just allows you to not jump back, save files, so when you die, you die. It's kind of over. So we'll click next here, and you can create the seed. So the seed will be I am a nub, and uh, you can randomize the seed. I would keep all of this the same, and now we can generate our world. So in beta 18, uh, they have added a few more things. They've added some polish to the game. Uh, the map is actually really interesting now. So as you can see, these are settlements. Um, that are owned by AI and these are bandits. Your proximity to the bandits does not matter. But what you really need to look at is to click these little tiles and you can see throughout the map and click terrain. And this will tell you everything you need to know. Now there's different biomes in RimWorld just like there are on our planet. So uh, we got like boreal forest, we got temperate forest, we got tropical rainforest, we got tundra. I recommend for your first playthrough to play on a temperate forest. It gives you a lot of trees, a lot of wildlife, um, the winters aren't too bad. But another thing I really want you to look at is the growing period. This is how many days out of the year, because there's 60 days in, uh, in RimWorld for a year to pass. And this tells you how many days you can expect to grow. Now I would recommend going as south as possible to be able to get a year-round temperate forest biome. So you might have to get a little sketchy, you might have to get real low in the world, get a temperate forest year round. This, will, this won't put a hiccup in your growing. And for your first playthrough, I really recommend it as it, 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 it doesn't throw a wrench in the plan. You can get the basic mechanics down and then you can move on to harder things like the desert, you can move on you know, to temperate swamp. So I would pick a temperate forest biome and from there 
you can look at the terrain now you can see this is flat these will be like small hills these should be like large hills and then you got mountainous i would recommend mountainous actually for your first playthrough what mountainous allows you to do is to find and maybe get lucky with a more defensible position now you can also build on roads for caravans, but that's more of an advanced subject, and to beat the game you actually don't need to apply that right now. If you want to dabble in that in your first playthrough, you can, where you send people out to trade. But right now, I, I, you can just stick to uh, in, in, inland from roads and rivers spot. So this looks like a pretty good spot. We got mountainous, we got year-round growing, we're gonna we're gonna go into it. Now, I know you're freaking out. But it's okay so this is our create character screen and we don't get to actually pick the characters but we can randomize them so these are we, these are the three people we will be taking with us and you can see an average of your team skills down here now these skills are all on a scale of one i believe to 20 how good they are at different things so you can see like 11 is a very skilled professional three is basic familiarity and these little glowing uh, embers here show passions so this means that this person will learn shooting melee animals and artistic more uh, they will actually learn it quick uh, quicker as they do it whereas if he's just doing cooking he's gonna learn it at the normal rate and you can see some people have big passions and they'll learn these things very quickly now keep in mind when a skill gets to 10 or past 10 I should say it does degrade slowly over time scaling as you get closer to 20 so things will generally cap out at 10 and unless that guy is doing it uh, repeatedly or has a high passion he'll push over 10 so yeah so let's talk about uh, the skills that are important shooting is very important melee I believe not as much especially with three people you can give everybody bows at the beginning of the game and shooting is a much more efficient way to kill things uh, because you're not uh, potentially putting yourself at, in danger of getting hurt. Uh, social is being able to communicate uh, with other colonies when they come, when they send their uh, caravans to trade with you. And animals is being able to tame animals and to train animals. Medicine to be able to doctor people. Cooking to cook meals. Construction to build structures like your homes that you're going to be building. Growing is to grow plants. Mining, uh, obviously to mine rocks into the mountains uh, if you need to get rid of things. Artistic is to create art, obviously. And crafting to craft bows. Uh, smithing comes into play here, things of that nature. And intellectual is researching. So what researching is in the game is to allow you to further unlock technologies. Think of almost like a sieve uh, research tree. It kind of works along the same lines, um, except you need a person doing it and they'll obtain points that will push you to discover different things. You can also look here at their childhood, their adulthood, backstories, and what they were. And this will tell people what, or tell you what they are incapable of. So she cannot, she will not do intellectual, artistic, and firefighting. I strongly encourage you, let's see if we can find this, to not do things, or to not have people when you first start out that are incapable of dumb labor, uh, cleaning, um, firefighting, it's just a very difficult thing to be able to handle. Like, this guy will not carry things. This lady will not carry things, and that's very difficult to handle, uh, especially when you have a small colony starting up. So I recommend you skip through a few times and find someone with not too many health problems. It's just a little scratch scar. Um, this guy is pretty, which means other colonists will like him. He's too smart, so he'll learn things faster, uh, much faster. And he's incapable of none. He's a pretty good character. Uh, he can shoot, he can hold his own a little bit, um, but he can do animals, he can be a doctor, and he can also research. So that's kind of a decent mix. That's not a bad uh, guy. So we'll have Zeppi. Uh, now we can always have a bodyguard. You can always use people who are really good at shooting. Now this person's an optimist, that's very good. Night Owl is a little tricky, you gotta change their sleep schedule. Green Thumb, uh, they get happier when they plant stuff. So they can be a grower slash bodyguard, that's fine. And this person just has, this person is beautiful and a night owl as well, which makes it easy because we can just have Ezra and Sale up at the same time. 
Now she is incapable of dumb labor and cleaning, and I, although she looks very good, I don't recommend we do this. I recommend you skip it and go to somebody else. Now this person is industrious. Volatile is not too bad. And walk, fast walker is pretty good. This is a very good person. We also need a constructor and somebody to kind of fill in the blanks. So we've got a very average group. This is very good. I like this setup. So like play with this for a little while. See see what the different traits are, uh, what the different capabilities are, what the different skills are, and try to get an idea of how, how you want to play the game. Do you want to tame a bunch of animals or do you want to have a strong shooting force? So it's all up to you. So we're going to start and generate the map. So the three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So we're going to land in our pods. We're going to pop out. Okay, so now this is where things start getting even more overwhelming. You see all these different controls down here, uh, which the tutorial will help you with. You see all these things dropped. I'm going to help you sort it out. So the first thing I want you to do is to scroll in here and to double click these items. When you double click, it'll uh, highlight other items that are like it. And you can see this red X, that means it's forbidden. They cannot touch it right now. We are going to unforbid all the items that we landed with. If you have a scenario where you're landing with no items, then you won't have to do this. But um, you can see we got our random animal is a cat, Zeke. Oh, you can just press uh, F. <laughs> it's been a couple weeks. Give me a break. <laughs> All right, so you can see now we can scroll out now that we have everything unforbidden so our guys can pick it up. We are going to scroll out and take a look at the map. Now, we're looking for places. The, the main two things I look for when picking a colony to keep this simple is rich soil so you can see this is mud in the bottom left hand corner you can see that there is no fertilizer so on regular soil you have 100 percent fertilizer plants will grow at the regular speed now if we find some rich soil you can see it's 140 percent in that bottom left hand corner and that will help uh, grow crops faster which is always something we would want so you don't want to be planting crops in mud they will not grow so I look for, oop, we have more steel down here, awesome. Got to watch out for that wolf. We want to look for an area that's easily defensible. People cannot come from here. So this could be a very good area to build. You could set up in late game, you could set up a couple turrets and help defend from the south and from the north. This is a pretty neat spot back here. You do have some rich soil and they would likely come through here sappers would sappers are raiders who uh, mine through rocks they don't just come through the nearest path of least resistance up here wouldn't be bad but there is a lot of mud you know I'm feeling really good about this spot down here you can always close one of these off and force them to come through here and plus we got plenty of rich soil so once you identify the spot that you are going to build, you're going to look back at your characters and you can click on them individually above here. As you can see, we switch through them down here in the left hand corner. We switch, uh, switch through each person. Now you can click their uh, social and click their gear and see what they're wearing. You can see each of them are wearing a Synthread uh, outfit, which is very good. These are the armor protection against it. Bullets, uh, which is your main concern, is sharp. But the most important tab is this character tab. This will give you what you saw on the menu of character creation. This will allow you to see and help you assign uh, priorities for each person. You can see their needs, you can see their food, their rest, their joy, their mood, and what's affecting their mood. 
and also their health if they're hurt and need to be taken care of. You can, now, all these modifiers are affected by little things. A person could get a permanent injury and their manipulation might not be the same ever again and their ability to shoot might be worsened. But without going too deep, we'll start off very simply. What you need to do when you first start out is to go to this work tab. This work tab tells the AI how to prioritize the tasks that you lay out in the world. So the first thing you need to do is to click manual priorities. Now one is a top priority, zero means they won't do it, four is their, the last thing they will get to. So they will do all of their ones from left to right, they will do all their twos from left to right, and so on and so forth. So something you want to do is to set everybody to firefight, everybody to patient. That means they'll be a patient. Have, you know, one person be a doctor. Have everybody set to bed rest if they're injured. And everybody to flick, which means they'll flick switches uh, when you need them to do that. Now you can start diversifying. Okay, this person will warden if we have prisoners. This person will handle animals. This person is going to cook. I sometimes click off hunting. I generally just draft people. We'll go into that later. Um, you need a couple people con to construct, but we really only have one person that can construct. This person also unfortunately grows as well. So we're going to stack those duties. Mining, you can have one person. That's like, you can click this and click mine. And so you can indent into these mountains. A lot of people see that as a strategy. Plant cut, cutting plants down like trees. Uh, we can have a couple people on that. Smithing is later on. We'll have uh, Naharis do that as well. Maybe we'll set this guy to tailoring. This guy will do art. This guy will craft things. And I like to set them all on two for hauling and cleaning. And then usually one person that's a researcher. All right, so once you have your manual priorities done, and this can change based on what you need if you really want to start off growing quickly, but this is how I'd recommend. I, I, I'd say uh, get a good amount of grow, a good amount of construct. Uh, make sure people are hauling and cleaning, and, and you'll be just fine. You can tweak it as you learn. So now that work's done, we're going to go to Architect. Now this provides you with your orders, your different orders to give these people that allow you to draw on the map and to, to build what your structures are going to be. You have your structures that you can build. You can right click to change the building material, but for now we'll use wood. You know, all of your furniture, which we'll go into in a bit. Security floors, the ship that you build to get um, off the rim world. All these different things will come into play, and we'll talk about them later. You don't need to know anything about Restrict yet. Uh, restriction is just where they're allowed to go. Right now we don't have a home area because we have nothing built, so people will stay unrestricted. Assigning allows them to stick with their current outfit. Drug policy, um, I generally set this to no drugs, and I'll just force people to use drugs if I want them to later in the game. Animals, if you have your animal, you can choose to slaughter him, decide which area he stays in, which you can affect with this area. You right-click expand allowed area and you can change the allowed areas that you restrict people and animals to. Unfortunately, cats cannot be trained, so he's kind of worthless. He's just going to be walking around. Now, this is your research tab. Until you build a research bench, your colonists will not be able to do research. However, you can still look at research projects now. So as you can see, there's this is the amount of points required to research it. And you have to go through all these things to eventually get to shipbuilding basics and to build these different parts of the ship to allow you to get off the planet. Now, they all also cost uh, high-end materials to build as well to get off the planet. It's not just the research that you need. The world will give you a view of the world and your settlement right here. History I don't use too much. It can cut to show your wealth growth. Now raids and how often you're raided, how hard you're raided is dependent on your wealth. And as you obtain more resources, more people, 
um, more goodies, uh, your wealth will go up and the game will get harder. That is how the game scales. It's harder, obviously, on harder difficulties, but the more wealth you have, and everything has wealth, even people have wealth, um, a wealth value, uh, the more wealth you have, uh, the harder the game is going to get. So keep that in mind. Don't just hoard things and not up your protection. Factions, this just tells you who you're friendly with, who's hostile. And then your menu to save, review your scenario, quit to OS, all those things. So the first thing, um, once now I know that was a lot to take in, you can go back and rewatch what I had to say about each tab. But um, now we can actually get into the gameplay. So what I would recommend doing, once you've unforbid everything, go to this character screen, see who's the best at shooting. So they're the best, they're going to get the bolt action rifle. Now all I did here was click her and right click and choose uh, which option. I wanted her to equip it. You can see that hand popped up. I'm going to click Naharis here and right click and she's going to take the revolver. He he has good melee and we don't have a bow for him yet so he's going to take the Plasteel Knife. Plasteel Knife is actually a very good weapon. So now that they're, once we start uh, once we unpause it, they're going to actually go and pick up these weapons, as you can see here. Ezra's going to go and pick up that gun. And now what's really cool, if, you, if you're, you know, a stat junkie, you can go into gear and you can click this info bar. And this info bar will tell you the accuracy at different ranges, the damage, the warm-up time, the range. It's, it's a very neat thing. And if I needed her to be aggro to something, I can draft her. And I can see the range and I can click something to shoot it. Drafting will make them stop everything they're doing and uh, make, make them available for military orders. I'm just right clicking here. So during raids you want to draft people and shoot the guys attacking you, obviously. But anyways, we're gonna start building our little spot. So obviously we need to get these goods to where we want to build. So what we're going to have to do is to get a zone area tool and build a stockpile zone. A stockpile zone allows you to put goods in a certain spot uh, for safekeeping. So this is going to be our stockpile zone. Now when you click the stockpile zone, you can rename it. You can copy it and paste it onto another zone that you make. But this, the storage menu, allows you to pick what goes in this. And as you play, you'll realize that you'll want different stashes for different things. Foods will need to be kept in a refrigerated area at one point. Uh, so you'll only have, you know, wood and stuff under this roof. So like I said, we built a stockpile area. And now we're going to build structures here, here, and here. Of walls, and then we're going to roof it. And this will protect the items from degrading. As you can see, if I click on this meal deteriorating due to being unroofed. So if I leave that out too long, it's it's going to deteriorate and become less useful. This is a packaged survival meal, and we want everything to stay intact. You're also going to need a dumping stockpile zone where you're going to put rocks and things that you are not using. So we'll set that over here. All right, well, we're getting close. Now we're going to need to set growing zones like we talked about earlier. We want to get to this area of rich soil. Now they will cut down the trees and things that are in the way to make this growing area. So this is going to be our growing area. We're going to make this rice. Use rice. It grows the quickest. It's just a good value. It lasts a long time if it's roofed. You don't need it refrigerated. And then here we're going to do one of cotton. And cotton's just going to allow us to build some furniture and things in the future. So, ooh, one thing I didn't go over was uh, these down here. These show uh, your colonist bar. It displays at the top of the screen if you look as I click, uh, if that bothers you. I like to have it because you can see this line shows their mood, how far down. Uh, this shows the beauty in an area. As you can see, rocks uh, make things ugly. Trees and dandelions make things nice. And there's other furniture items you can build in your homes uh, to increase the beauty, which makes them happier. 
This will toggle the zone areas on and off so you can see them a little better, or growing areas or stockpile areas or dumping areas. And this will be the learning helper in the top right, which is super useful for everything you need to learn about the game. Quick tips. And you can see the temperature outside, it's a clear day. Um, it's the first of this season. There's four seasons, April, May, Jugus, uh, September, and December. Uh, they're 15 days each to make the 60 day year. And here's the speed toggles for the game. You can also use one through three, that's what I do. So now that we have our work priorities set and we have our growing zones set, people are actually gonna start working and hauling. So the guy that is set, who is set to growing, Ezra and Naharis will go and grow, while Zeppi is going to start hauling things, as you can see, because that's just his order of priorities. So if we zoom out and watch them, you can see they're going to start planting. Zeppi is going to start putting things in this stockpile area. So everything is all good. Get a couple growing zones going, one for food, one for cotton. Get a stockpile and a dumping area. And make sure your people equip your uh, goodies. Make sure all of them are unforbidden. And you will be all set. Oops, clicked that. Now let your people do their thing. Once you got some wood stockpiled up, as you can see in the top left corner, uh, they give you a little description about what you can do with each material. Silver is the currency in the game, which you will trade with caravans to get other things. You can also trade good for goods for goods. But that is later. That is not a now issue. But now that we have wood, we can start actually ordering people to build things. So this is going to be... Um, if I can see my stockpile zone here. Oop, that's wrong. Stockpile zone here. We're going to build a wall here, 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 and here. And we are going to do this build roof area. And you're gonna click and drag. And these are gonna create pillar supports for this roof. And the roof is going to allow um, these things under it to not deteriorate, which is very important. We want our wood to stay good. Uh, steel does not degrade, but we want our wood to stay good. We want our survival meals to be good, our components to stay um, healthy. All of that stuff is important. So you can see she's in Harris is building the roof now. And why not queue up some other uh, structures? We can build rooms. So where do I want my main structure to be? Maybe back a little ways? Now you can build rooms as however you want. Uh, this is your first playthrough. Do not worry about efficiency, you guys. Um, it's not worth the hassle. But for three people, build a nice little common room. And make sure you put a little door on there. Now she's laying the foundations and she'll start building them. These people will be bringing more and more wood. Uh, you can put floors in. Wood floors are very expensive as you can see in the bottom right. It shows how much wood that's going to take to wood floor it. It'll make it look a lot prettier but for right now that's not an issue. We're going to go back to orders and haul these rocks out of our house. Let's go check up how the growing is going. See we got some rice planted and we got some cotton planted. They're slowly hauling everything over. They're eating some of the survival meals. So we're going to speed this up. One thing you're going to want to put down for the first night. If you can't get to beds right away, that's fine. You can put down sleeping spots, and they'll sleep in these spots. But try to get down three beds. Oops. And you can rotate the items you're setting with Q. If you click Q, it'll turn... Uh, 90 degrees each time so for right now we're just going to put three beds like this and we're also going to put in a little table with a couple stools so they can eat at uh the dining table and not get a mood debuff from not eating at a table we might build another door right here just so they don't get jammed up in the doorway 
so we're just gonna work our way down like we got to furniture we don't need an animal sleeping sp uh, you can put an animal sleeping spot it's free so your cat will sleep there um, our cat's not important because it doesn't do anything not nearly as much as taming one of these deer wood or uh, a Labrador a dog you can see he's taking this wood to the dumping stockpile security we're not gonna worry about now actually we do have some steel so we can put some uh, we can put some uh, sandbags which provide a very good cover bonus so if we're getting raided from out here we can put our three drafted people behind here and set them to shoot and we'll also do that right here as well actually we'll do an in line for all you OCD folks <laughs> And we're just going to keep working our way down. Of course, once we get enough wood, we can build doors, but that is not the priority. Temperature is not an issue because of the biome we picked. Joy, now this is important. You're going to want to have a horseshoes pen. They're very cheap. And your people will use these uh, for their joy modifiers, which you can see right here, which is something they need. And they'll, they'll do that automatically. Now you can see we have big mood debuffs because we have a night owl in the daytime, but for the sake of this tutorial we are not going to switch their sleep cycle. I can show you how to. But when we uh, restrict their schedules, you can see that there is uh, anything time, which they will chip away at their work and get their adequate amount of joy in eating. Um, there's a sleep time and a joy time. You can specify these, but I'd still recommend eight, eight hours of work a day. And now if they're night owls, you just make this awake. And then you would make this sleep by clicking this and affecting this like so. You can also restrict their assigned areas. I like to keep people unrestricted unless there's a mad animal or some event. So see, we still got people working. What's this guy doing? He's hauling more steel. Perfect. Now, if you really want them to, ooh, make sure you're grabbing that uh, deteriorating stuff, you can click on them and right click and they will prioritize that next assignment before they go on to their next one. Good, we're building the beds. This is all great, guys. You can build graves for dead people because your colonists will get mad if one of your colonists dies. You have to bury them. But that's uh that that won't happen on this low of a difficulty, I don't believe. You should be fine, guys. You you'll have some deaths, but you'll be okay. Now uh, you're gonna want a crafting spot early game. Now if you click on this crafting spot, this is the same for stoves, etc. You have this thing called a bill. And if you click on the bill, you can add a bill, and this will tell you what you can make. Now, if we had smoke leaves, which you can grow, you can make a joint. Uh <laughs> You can make, uh, if you have fabrics, you can make headdresses, tribal wear. Um, right now we have Synthread, which is one of the best materials in the game. Um, because of the crash landing scenario, you're not going to be making much of this stuff. you got two guns, you might make one short bow if you really want the guy who has a knife to have a short bow. But here is where we start getting into production. Now this is a very important tab. A sculptor's table allows you to start making art through the bill system, just like I showed you in the crafting, which will provide beauty in the area of your room, like in here. Um, you can place like wood sculptures and steel sculptures and make things look pretty. Uh, butcher table. This is needed to be able to butcher animals. You can uh, butcher creature is a bill you can put, and when you hunt. Uh, they'll take it back, but meat spoils in a day, and before you have refrigeration set up, that is not advisable. This is just a beginner basic how to just jump in to the game guide. Uh, having a freezer and things like that is a little ways down the line. Tailor benches to make your clothing, stoves to make meals, also through the bill system. Stone cutters table to make these blocks uh, into buildable blocks to make sandstone walls that you can manipulate. And you have a simple research bench, which is very important. Someone, you should build a chair on these open spots. I'll show you this real quick. See where these open things are at all these workstations? Uh, you would wanna build a chair right there. 
facing the research bench so people are comfortable while they spend time there. And people will be, uh, a specific person will be spending a lot of time at the research bench if you prioritize it, if you make this a one after a little while. Because you want to be continuing your progress in the game. You want to be unlocking more things to build. Um, I wouldn't bother with the nutrient paste dispenser or the hopper. But you can look into those if you uh, would like to. So yeah, we're starting to get to our first night. We got our beds built. We got our stockpiles, our dumping stockpiles. Our rice little plantation here is almost done, which is great. Uh, we got some cloth planted, which is also very good. Little note, these uh, ship chunks will have fallen. You can deconstruct them to get more components in steel. And your people will just walk over there, deconstruct them, and haul it back to your stockpile. That was a very good start, guys. Um, this is on three speed. This is one, two, three speed. This space bar is pause. I love the music in this game, too. It's really relaxing. So yeah, let me know what you guys think so far about the video down in the comments below. I hope this is giving you some sort of direction. I know this is the first time of me ever recording myself, so if I'm a little bit shotgun method, uh, I apologize. I'm trying my best. <laughs> so yeah, we'll watch our people interact with each other. Finish up their chores. Make sure that this roof is built. Yep. They will build roofs over structured areas, that's just what they're set to do. And now you can start chipping away at what they want. They have an awful barrack. They don't like it in here. They're in darkness. So the next thing we're going to want to focus on is I'm going to do an order to chop wood. And we're going to get all these trees out of here. You click and span to the right or to the left and you'll highlight all these uh, full grown trees to cut. Now you can also do that with all these other commands. Hunt, you can hunt, cancel, cancel different jobs that you assigned, tame, tame animals, harvest, harvest plants when they're done. You can click on them to see their progress. So I'm going to chop more wood so that I can make a floor in here so that it's it's tolerable for everybody because they're they're pretty upset about the state of this place. Now the nice thing is, is when you crash land you have so many meals that you don't really have to freak out about having something in place to cook meals right away. Uh, we're just going to let our rice grow and let our plantation you know get started, and we're going to focus more on the construction. Now you can add, you can see these things, you can add dressers to provide more comfort to beds. So we're actually going to build a dresser uh, right here. It doesn't look very nice, but for the sake of the video, you can see these lines stemming out uh, that will attach to it. This will just make the beds more comfortable. Um, there's also a night and end table, I believe, that you can build by each bed that will make them more comfortable. And these, uh, can the dresser only connect to one bed? Nope, all nearby beds. Whereas the end table can only connect to one. Now also I want you to take note that if I click on a table, for example, you can see the quality of dominant says normal. And these stools, good, good stool, good. These are very good. This affects the comfort modifier. Uh, of that piece of furniture and it makes it look prettier too you can see they have a one instead of nothing and then the beds will show how good they sleep normal is good poor is bad and then shoddy is worse than poor and then awful is worse than shoddy so normal and good is very good uh, if you have people with low construction then you're just gonna have to kind of keep crafting things or keep constructing things um, until they're able to produce better quality things but it's not the end of the world but this is very good that we can build so quickly and have such good quality things 
So I'm going to let this stuff get finished up so you can see how uh, the trees get cut. Someone got food poisoning from berries. It's not the end of the world. Do not worry about that. They'll just throw up a little, but they'll clean it up. Ooh, also make sure to put floors under your doorways. That is something a lot of people forget to do. So we're making very good progress. This is only the second day, and we got a base. We got a research table with a... Uh... Oh, we need to pick a research assignment. So this whole... Uh, tier system has been changed, but you can kind of pick what you want to go for first. You can pick a recurve bow if you're in a situation where you didn't start out with guns. But something I would recommend you doing is potentially getting right into smithing so you can get to machining and, you know, and start, and start getting into some of these, uh, you know, better, uh, uh, microelectric base electronics basics uh, allows you to build a lot of cool things and stem off but you're, you're, you're gonna have to get most of this except for this all right here none that this is necessary in my opinion I don't do much drug production I don't do much of this if you you can kind of get away with skipping this and kind of streamline into getting into the rest of the game but it's up to you for now we'll just choose smithing and you'll see that when this person is done with their work they will default to researching, and it'll uh, research points will gain slowly. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit. As you can see, we have these items. If someone gets hurt or sick, uh, the doc they will go into bed rest on a medical bed. So, reminding me of which, we should build a medical bed somewhere. How about right there? And once that's built, we can make it blue. By clicking on it, you can see I can set for prisoners. I can click, uh, click this, or I could click this for medical. And when people are hurt, they'll go there and the doctor will come and use a medicine to heal them. This is very good medicine. You can also grow heal root at level eight growing, which is an herbal medicine, which doesn't work as good, but it's, you know, very renewable and cheap. So nice, we're finishing up our house here. And things are looking very good. We still have plenty of meals so we don't have to worry about getting a stove up, but just for the sake of showing you, I am going to uh, put a fueled stove in. Actually no, we'll do power and then I'll show you how to use uh, electric things. So now we're jumping into power. Now if you start on Crash Landed, you're going to start with this research of electricity available to you. If you do not and you start off with some tribal uh, situation, you're not going to have electricity. Now you can build solar generators which cannot have roofs over them. And solar generators uh, will uh, obviously use the power of the sun to produce electricity. I've never really dab uh, dabbled much with uh, wind turbines. You need to clear all the trees and stuff out of their way and they're kind of inconsistent. I've never really used wood fire generators or chem fuel power generators much. But so we're gonna build a solar generator and a battery is gonna help us store leftover energy. So I would build a battery right next to it and pretty soon when they build it, we'll be able to see with the power icon open how, um, the electricity will flow. Electricity is obviously very important. Oh, almost done. Okay, so now you see these blue uh, segments. That is what's connecting the power, and you can add more of them with power conduits. So, uh, for example, I'm going to run them. They cost one steel each, and I'm going to run them around the whole building. I'm going to go down here, and up here, and I'm also going to go up here. Now items can connect from a ways away, you'll see in a bit when we make them, but that should work for now. Now they'll quickly put these up. See, just putting them up. Now you can see this is all the access to the power place to connect to. So you can see we're already producing full power. The yellow bar is fully up and it's already actually storing energy because we don't have anything consuming power so we need things consuming power so let's build an electric stove and we'll also build a stool 
and this, once they build it, will connect directly to the uh, power. Now, also, the the first things, you can also do an electric tailor bench to make clothes, but right now you're set on clothes. You don't need to make clothes for probably a few seasons. That's something you can figure out later. Right now we're trying to get the important things and the basic concepts shown to you. And now you can also have lamps in your house. See now, see the power cord, how far this can go away from a conduit. There will be a little cord, which makes my OCD go a little bit crazy. But um, we can click here. We can click here. You know, we can have a light here. We can have a light here. And when they build that, obviously these will all light up. And these people can work in light, which will make them much happier. I apologize for any sniffles you hear. I'm just getting over a cold, but I still wanted to get this video out. So yeah, we have our lights up. We're going to switch this to our medical bed. Maybe build an end table by that as well. Why not? Get rid of that crafting spot. I already explained that to you. Now, on stoves, you can look to this bill system again. And you can cook simple meals, fine meals, lavish meals. These take different ingredients, but a simple meal is what you're going to do. And now you're going to want to look at how many people you have. They eat a couple meals a day, two, three meals a day. So I would click do until you have X and set the number you want. So that means whenever you drop below this number of meals made, the guy that's in charge of cooking will go and make more and put them in the stockpile. So I'd probably do 12 for three people, maybe 11. Now obviously we don't have anything to make meals out of yet, but once our rice is grown, uh, we'll be able to make some meals. We got visitors, a group of friendly people are uh, visiting the colony. They don't have anything to trade, but they're just visiting. They're just stopping by, which is no problem. And now you can see in the power how this is connecting. And if you're having trouble connecting, you can uh, reconnect. You can also shut off the power to save power if you want to shut off certain things. And I really feel like that's a lot of the basics to get you started. You have your house, you got a food supply, so now your people will harvest this and store it under here. And then your cook will take these, uh, they'll take 10 rice to be precise, each, and they'll start cooking them. Each bushel will produce a certain amount. And uh, he'll make meals and he'll put them here and they'll go and grab the meals and take them back to the table to eat them. And they'll sleep here, this guy's researching. And you can continue to build more solar if you you know you have more and more demands as you unlock more and more things with your research. And obviously we haven't had any events other than the visitors visiting from down here. But you're gonna get raids, in which case you would wanna draft people and do something like this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I apologize. But, um, and then you can choose them to attack, like this. Now this guy has a knife, so I'm going to undraft him so he doesn't do anything stupid. But, you know, you can get people to it, and they'll automatically draft the attack raiders that are attacking you. Now, a cool thing to show you right now is if you click on this dough, and you click health, you can see actually what damage we did to it. We destroyed its right lung, its rear, front, left leg. It's really cool in this game. You can see what it does to the efficiency of different body parts and where you hit them matters. So it's a really cool concept. So I would encourage you every time there's a event to click it, to read what it's about and what it's advising you to do, to zoom out and take a look at potential raiders, click on them, see what gear they have, and fend them off. But this, these basic things should get you started, and I know it seems like a lot to suck in at first, but after you do it a few times, and after you realize that the tabs are limited until you unlock more and more, and by that time you already have it built, like you see it's the third or fourth day, and we already, yeah, the third day, and we already have most things built that we can build right now. We already have a nice little base humming.
So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is just a very basic guide. If you could give me some feedback down in the comments if this helped you at all. You know, I don't, I didn't expect this to be a, a perfect guide. It's the first video I've ever made. But um, if you could give me some feedback, that would be great, potentially on the audio or the content. And I hope you guys pick up RimWorld. I hope you give it a run. I hope you give it a few hours to really sink in, get over that initial, uh, that big learning curve because it's such a fun game. It's, it has so much replayability. And I think a lot of people could have a lot of fun with it, especially now that the game is getting so polished and so many different things are being added. Um, I definitely think it's a good one to add to your gaming repertoire. So I thank you so much if you've made it to the end here. Um, I appreciate your time, and I hope you check out my channel and potentially subscribe for more videos. Have a good one, guys.